Well, I mean, for first of all, just looks a bit like the, the team stuff, the, the fun stuff, the team, team bonding stuff. So. Oh, I think it's been good. I think the, 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 they, they've rarely been apart since Thursday night when they went home for a little while and we left again and met at 4.15 and left at 4.30 in the morning. And uh, we had a great trip out and uneventful and, and I think they enjoy it. They're getting acclimated uh, to the time change and spending time together. We've had a great practice and uh, they've had a chance to see their families if their families are here now, but most importantly they've had a chance to kind of take it in and I think that's what's most important, whether they get in the water, whether they walk around, whether they go down to the shops, uh, those type of things. No, 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 no surf training or, or no uh, surfing training going on right now. But uh, my daughter, my daughter Ainsley is going to do that, but I don't think any players know that. Okay, they're having a great time. Well, we just—I think the biggest key we tried to do on Friday night was keep them up and uh, and make sure that they start trying to get to sleep somewhere in that 8, 30, 9 o'clock range, at least aim for it, and, and try to sleep in as much as possible and get up the next morning at eight and eat at eight thirty, have a meeting, and then uh, uh, get to practice. So I think that's—I think they were fatigued last night. I think they were tired last night. I think they'll feel a lot better by the day, and it's, it's, it's hopeful they can feel a little bit better every day. But, the key is to really stay hydrated, the key is to um, take care of yourself, get rest when you can, but when you can get that first night sleep and then that second night sleep, try to make those long night steps, you know, rather than a lot of napping during the day, and, and uh, I think for the most part they've done it. Is the preparation different with three games in three days? No, not really, because because really what you want to do in the preseason is, is, is build in some of those concepts that you're going to need looking ahead to the schedule and and work on that. And then when you get out here, you'll put a good focus on the team that you're going to play. And because that's the most important game, it, it really is. The first game, and it's very easy to look at it as a three-game tournament, but you got to look at it as, as a game a day for three days. And it's different. So to me, and because you want to put your focus on making sure we're defending Wake Forest the right way and making sure that, that we understand their personnel. But as far as how we play and as far as some of the defensive concepts and things like that, you want to be working on them in the preseason so that when you get into that in a walkthrough type of situation out here from game two to game three, that it's a little bit easier for them. Very, very physical. We're, we're, we're relentless on the glass. How we run teams by plus 17, plus 18, shooting almost 34 free throws a game. Brian Crawford's playing outstanding and uh, shoot 50% from the three, getting to the foul line seven times a game. He's had some big scoring games. They run the break uh, effectively but selectively uh, when they go. Uh, but they do a great job of getting the ball inside. Very, very similar uh, to the way uh, they played at Kansas when, when Danny was there and then the way that he played at Tulsa. Uh, so to me, they, um, they're, they're just they're really, really good at, at getting you into a half-court game, keeping good spacing, they're trying to attack you in a high-low situation, and then they're relentless on the blocks. And we've got to make the game go. But at the same time, when it's in the half-court, we've got to do a great job of really recognizing personnel and, and not let them just own the middle of the floor. Yeah, obviously they got some young guys who you guys got some familiarity with. Is there any benefit to that? You guys can kind of know or, or got a chance to see? Or well, the players don't really know them like that. No, it's just a matter of getting to know them on the film and then getting a feel for it in the game. That's what's important. What about Max? He, he's obviously he's starting. He's had some good performances. What do you like about what he's doing and kind of what's the next step for him? Just continue to improve and, and keep getting his footwork right uh, for his shot. Uh, keep really creating some space, covering more ground in the post, realizing the athlete that he's capable of being. Um, keep being a quarterback on defense. Uh, he's doing a great job of defending the pick and roll. Very active. Uh, I think he's our deflection leader, or, or, or second in deflections after three games. Uh, very active hands. Uh, that's been very good for us. And uh, he's been there. You know, he brings a, he brings a presence to our team, and I think he's gaining confidence all the time. What about Yogi's rebounding? He was, he was good last year, but he just kind of stands out when he's tied to the team lead. Yeah, but we're trying to make sure that, that uh, uh, we're doing a few different things when it comes to who goes to the offensive board based on where you're at on the court, and I think he's 
doing an excellent job with that. I mean, it's he's he's a tremendous athlete, and, and, and you want to have your best one of your best athletes, one of your best players, have numerous chances to to make more plays. It's like it's like putting some of your best players on special teams in football. You, know, you want your best players to be able to impact the game. And one thing he can do is rebound the ball, and, and he's seeing the benefits of that. And and we're going to see the benefits of that. That's going to be a huge thing as we move forward to make sure that we get more fouls. I mean, or get fouled more so we can get to the foul line more. So I think that'll help as well. Uh, one more thing on Wake. You know, I'm seeing uh, Ken Palm's got him as the 42nd best offense right now. Specifically, Ken Palm has him as the 42nd best offense right now. Offensively, what do you think from them on film? Oh, I think they're so efficient at the, in the lane. I mean, they're yeah. getting to the foul line so much. And, uh, I mean, I don't know any team that's shooting 34 free throws uh, after three games, in yeah. a game. So, to me, and they've got double-figure rebounders. They're just, they're great on the glass. And this game is going to come down to... Uh, being really smart on the perimeter defensively, uh, understanding their personnel, not letting them just pick us apart in a high-low offensive game, and keeping them off the foul line. Mm -hmm. So big, big things are going to be the foul line and the glass in that game. And I think that's one of the reasons they're so efficient because they're getting so many shots close at the basket, and they're taking good three-point shots. So I think that's where a lot of that stems from.